another veteran of the industry, Mr. Kailash Kulkarni and uh, Kailash ji, the definition of a veteran is someone who can go back to Bombay and decide to increase the commission for Karnataka MFDs by 10 basis points. Okay, so you are another veteran of the industry, the co-CEO of HSBC AMC, a familiar face with many MFDs. Mr. Kulkarni has 27 years of experience in the BFSI sector. He will be sharing his thoughts on remembering the basics to leverage India's road to global dominance. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Harish. Namaskara. So firstly, thank you, Mamadak, for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor to be here and to see such a large gathering, especially from non-Bangaluru. So first of all, let's give a clap to people who have come all the way from different cities. It, it very clearly shows that uh, you all want to learn, you all want to understand and grow your business. So congratulations to you. Also, congratulations for people from this city because you're hosting it and also taking part in this. So when I was given the topic of leveraging India's road to global dominance, I actually thought, what should I talk of? Because I think you have read paper. You have read everything that is to be known about India, India growth story. But sometimes we forget the basics. So I am just trying to connect what is expected of of India and then and then talk about how can we in our business hopefully gain so that we can leverage this great India story. So as you can see, we were the 12th largest not too long ago uh, and today we are fifth and hopefully we will be the third largest economy by before 2030. So say many great people, not me, but I'm just representing what they say out here. And if we look at, in terms of economic growth across the world, uh, we are expected to be the fastest growing economy, uh, even beating China and many other players. So clearly a good place to be. I think the earlier speakers covered how our growth story is going to help us. Uh, and the more we leverage, our growth. Growth creates opportunities, opportunities create money, money creates wealth, wealth is managed by the people sitting in this room. So very, very important. And let's look at this. Have we really had a great run all throughout? But it has seriously changed over the last 8-10 years. And let's look at this graph. So we have had lots of ups and lots of downs right from 1980. And even if you look at the green colored graph between 2002 and 2008, just before the Lehman crisis hit, where the market tank, the global financial crisis, even in that green graph, there are periods where the market fell by 15% to 25% in short period of time. So it wasn't a secular run. But what's important to note is, if we look at the growth from 10,000 to 60,000, the last 10,000, the 40,000, 50,000, 60,000 has actually gone faster. One year, nine months to one year, eight months to one year, seven months. And if our country keeps growing the way it is intending to grow with all the support that is there, with all the progress that is being made, with the new laws coming into being, which is making our country more efficient, I think, this will really going to help. Possibly the next 10,000 could be less than one year and seven months, or rather, yeah, one year and seven months. So this is the optimism that is there today in India. Recently I was there abroad. There isn't too much optimism in the other markets, especially in Europe. We are in a much better position as compared to any other country. So the question is, is India the place to be? And the answer is obviously yes. But let's look at it. What is helping it? And these graphs that I've shown here are more to do with how is it going to benefit us, people sitting in this room. So if you look at people, 
who are 2 lakh and above, there was just about 17% of the people, population, in 2012. That has already gone up to around 35%. So nearly three times the number of people have got added into what we can say is the addressable universe which we cater to. जो हम लोगों हम लोगों के क्लाइंट होते हैं, उन क्लाइंट की बात कर रहा हूँ मैं। वो क्लाइंट्स टुडे इज़ अबाउट 35 परसेंट ऑफ़ द पापुलेशन। क्लियरली अ सिग्निफिकेंट। एंड लेट्स लुक एट व्हाट्स हैपनिंग ऑन द बॉटम लेफ्ट हैंड साइड। सेविंग्स मूविंग तू फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स। 59 परसेंट ऑफ़ द मनी इन इंडिया वा� Today, more than 50% <coughs> of the money is actually in financial assets. So more people are moving their money from savings or real estate into financial assets. Again, this is the audience that you and I want to. Higher savings rate. India is actually now more than the global average when it comes to saving rate. Again, a very powerful, but we are not the best. Singapore has a much higher saving rate as compared to India. So that is something we look forward to, it's growing. And the most important part, and this crowd ke liye khas karke sabse important part hai, ki T30, B30, 2017 mein, T30 in mutual funds contributed 90%. 90% of the assets were from T30. In just a span of five, six years, it's 75-25 or 73-27. Clearly, more people from small town India outside the top 14-15 cities want to invest in mutual funds. So this is a very good sign for all of you to, I think Swarup was the one who said, can we grow our business four times than what we have? I think if these numbers are telling it, it should be much more than four times. So, Small town India is wanting to move their money from traditional investments into financial investments and to give them advice or to talk to them about which is the right place to invest. The people sitting in this room can do that. <clears throat> so the question is that do we really need to do something different when we talk about this whole concept or can we just remember the basics that have we have been taught but say 20 years se hum log kuch basics bhul jate hain like i said complacency we become complacent we forget the basics so according to me whether you look at a shorter time horizon or you take a longer time horizon and what's the difference between the two is the amount of time that was invested through this the first one on the left hand side is from 2016 to 2022. And the second one, which is on the right hand side, is from 1996 to 22. But they tell a same story. Agar customer, if he tries to time the market and he misses the best 10 days or 15 days or 20 days, you actually lose a lot of money. So long term, 14, 13.8% was his return if he was fully invested through the period. And if he missed the best 30 days, his return came down to 5.6%. Now, all this is what we all know that this has been taught to us over and over again. Question is, how many of you save this slide or carry a printout of this slide on your, in your file folder or if you are using a laptop or uh, iPad or a phone to show your customers, please carry data because data has a lot of weight. And this clearly shows that if you stay, and it is impossible to time the market. If we stay focused and stick to our basics, we will make money. So first, the discipline part of it, which again Swarup spoke about, I'm just putting this in numbers that these are actual, and people say long term, short term, I've given you both scenarios.
SIP has become a household name. But people should realize that markets also fluctuate. Sometimes markets are flat. Sometimes markets are going one way up. But you actually make money if you go through the entire cycle, even for SIPs. Because when the markets are down, you keep investing and you make money. And the big difference is that from point A to point B, if you had continued your SIP through the market fall, which is shown under C, you actually would have delivered a 16% plus return. However, had you got the crash of C, people panic, people will call you, you're saying, nahi bhai, humko market mein nahi rehna hai, humko nikal jana hai, people withdraw their money, the, you would have had negative return. I have always seen that when a SIP has given a one year or two year negative return, people stop their SIPs. And possibly that is the biggest crime that they commit and we should stop them from committing this crime. <coughs> this is my personal favorite slide. So I, there are no words written there, so I'm going to explain it to you. I'll just stand at the side actually for this. And this is my favorite slide. When we SIP, any customer bolte hai, SIP sign up karne ke liye, what do we go and do? We tell them why SIP is good? Yes or no? We tell them how much amount of SIP they should put, correct? We tell them 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, depending on our assessment of that person's ability to put money in a SIP. Is that correct? Show of hands, please. Yes? Here is a different way of looking at it. And if you follow this mechanism, I believe your SIP average amount will go up considerably. Don't talk about what SIP amount should be invested. Never talk about it. Don't say 3,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Never say. So whatever is the income of the person, whether it is business income, salary income, rental income, all income put together, Minus your monthly expenses of food, electricity, water, phone, internet, the servants in the house, etc., etc. Minus the EMI, whether it is an EMI for car or house or a credit card, whatever is there. Minus, and that is the most important thing. I never tell people that you should sacrifice your lifestyle. Enjoy your life. Go for movies, go for a holiday, go for picnics. So that is the discretionary expense, which is there shown as a popcorn uh, mnemonic. So income minus monthly expenses, minus EMI, minus discretionary spend. Actually, that money is lying in a bank mostly, not doing anything. And out of that money, you should say that, okay, you should do your investments. And then you can say, 80% or 90% of the money lying out of this balance that is there should be your SIP amount. And you'll be surprised. When my friends ask me how much SIP I should do, I actually ask them, tera income kya hai? And then I ask them, tera expense kya hai? And I said, Tera holiday expense kya hai? And I do this activity. Somebody who was willing to put 20,000 rupees as a SIP amount, he found that he could put 1.8 lakh rupees as a SIP amount. Just because he was playing safe. So, easily if you follow this formula, you can double, triple or quadruple the amount of SIP you will get from the same person. So, my request to you, it helps in two ways. It helps in a conversation engagement with the person. He understands why you're saying so. And if you are able to show data of how SIPs have done well or how not timing the market has done well, the previous slides that I showed, that helps in ensuring that you will get much higher SIPs. Again, this is a slide which is known to everybody. If you start early, you make much more money than you start late. So if somebody started at 25 and somebody started at 30, to make the same amount of money, 
this person at a average value of 10,000, he would need 9,000 odd rupees more to make the same 1.9 crores, is it? Again, this is a data point. The problem is we don't carry data point with us when we discuss with clients. We must carry. All these data points you'll get on the internet or various fund houses would give it to you. At HSBC, we are happy to share these data points with the disclaimers that are required because if you don't carry data, the discussion with your client is a little superfluous. Kabhi kabhi client ko samajhta nahi hai, par jab wo black and white mein dekhta hai, tab usko samajh mein aata hai ki achha, aisa hota hai. And if you have a printout or you can send it to him on WhatsApp or email it to him, please do so because it remains with them and it is a reminder one year later when you go to do a full portfolio review, you could tell him ki maine ye kaha tha, dekho aise ho raha hai. Ye bhoat important hai. Keeping on reminding the clients that something like this is important. We do a lot of the first three Children's education, children's marriage, vacation, buying a car, buying a house. Unfortunately, what we don't do very well is we don't focus on retirement planning. Thanks to medical advances, we are living longer. But we are not preparing ourselves for it because we believe our children will take care of us. The truth is, many of our children today study abroad and then settle abroad. And we don't want to relocate because our friends, family circle is in our town and city in India. So are you prepared to meet your own retirement expenses? Or do we teach our clients to meet their retirement expenses? So that's something we need to focus on. I feel that is an area which is not well done. So this is a quiz question. So are we missing out on any other thing from an investment perspective apart from what I told? Anything we are missing out on? Sorry? Okay, so I've covered asset allocation in that if it's short term, it will be debt. I have not said it that way, but I said that if you are hopefully buying a house or buying a car or children's education, you need different asset allocation. So that's correct. Uh, Asset allocation is one which I've not spelled out directly, but indirectly I've said it. Anything which is missing out, and the next slide is going to shock you, because this is coming from somebody who works in a mutual fund company called HSBC Mutual Fund. But this is going to shock you. Any other answer? Sorry? Emergency fund, okay, good answer. I think very important. I don't consider term insurance and health insurance as competitor. If I am a good financial planner, I am doing good for my client. Please get them to do not money back insurance, but term insurance. Please get them to do a family floater plan of 25 lakh rupees because medical expenses are really, really tough. A good financial planner will talk about this apart from mutual funds. So these are two things I think we should talk about. So just to sum up, if you believe in the India story, stay invested, most important. Please don't time the market, be invested in the market. My personal experience, I had invested in 1998. That time there was no pan, there was no email, there was nothing, I changed my house. <coughs> It was in a growth plan. I forgot to inform the AMC. Today, that is the fund which has given me my best return in my entire portfolio. So that I have kept. That time I had put 10,000. I wish I had put more. So that is something which is there. Volatility will continue to be a part of our journey even from today, tomorrow, day after, this year, next year, even if India is doing the best in the world, volatility will continue to be a part of your life. And what do I do when it's volatile? Any day the index 
drops by one and a half percent on that day, I put a little money in an index fund. Simple. I don't think. If it has dropped by one and a half percent on a day or two percent, you can decide the threshold benchmark, put some money in an index fund. Define what is savings and define what is investment. Asset allocation. So whatever is short term savings and fixed income products, whatever is long and super long term hybrids and equity as a product. Choosing your asset class, we have discussed it. Many people have discussed, so I'm not going to spend time. And this last point is for your customers, but please keep reminding them that do it yourself is not always good. You can get hurt. Uh, how many of you all have visited IKEA? <coughs> Sorry. So, <coughs> IKEA, you are supposed to buy furniture, assemble it on your own. What do Indians do? We buy furniture, call the carpenter, and he assembles it for ourselves. So, even for furniture, we get help. So, Tell your clients they need help. <coughs> Wishing you a very happy, successful, and healthy 2023. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Kailash. Lot of usable data points and uh, tips and strategies. Thank you so much. May, may I invite on stage Mr. N.K. Kulkarni of Balari chapter? Is he here? Yes, Kulkarni, sir. And Vanita C.K., Joint Secretary. To kindly give Mr. Kailash Kulkarni a memento from our side. We insisted on one Kulkarni giving it to another Kulkarni. Okay.